Welcome to today's video. We're digging further into the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, one of the most bewildering mysteries of modern aviation. On March 8, 2014, the Boeing 777 vanished with 239 passengers and crew on board en route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. Despite one of the largest search and rescue operations in aviation history, little to no trace has ever been found. The lack of answers has led to endless speculation, conspiracy theories, and intense scrutiny of the airline industry. So in this video, we'll explore why we have not found the Malaysia Airlines 370 wreckage site or any possible leads to finding the crashed aircraft. The governments of Malaysia, China, and Australia undertook the search for answers on a large scale with the most cutting-edge technology available. However, the investigation was plagued by a lack of evidence and crucial errors in determining where to search. Now, when we brainstorm, the reasons why the wreckage site of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 has not been found yet are multifaceted. Let's pinpoint a few of them. The vast and remote search area. One reason for the difficulty in finding the wreckage site is the vast and remote search area. The aircraft is believed to have gone down in the southern Indian Ocean, an area where the nearest land is over 1,200 miles away. Moreover, the ocean in this area is also extremely deep, with depths of over 4,000 meters. That's nearly two and a half miles to the seabed. This has made the search efforts more challenging and complex, requiring sophisticated technology and specialized equipment to scan the ocean floor no concrete evidence. Moreover, there's a lack of concrete evidence and information about what happened to the aircraft. The exact cause of the disappearance is still unknown, and several theories exist. Some of these theories include a pilot error or possible suicide murder attempt, mechanical failure, and even deliberate action, the bad weather. Not to mention, the search effort has been hampered by bad weather with high waves and strong winds making it difficult for search vessels and aircraft to operate effectively. There have been leads, as discussed in our previous video, yet nothing for sure. So without knowing the specific circumstances surrounding the disappearance, it is challenging to identify the precise location of the wreckage, having no idea where to begin. Not to forget, there were countless crucial gaps in the data initially available. From having no idea where to search, a lack of conclusive evidence to help identify the missing aircraft's location, and some inconsistencies in the available data. It was a lot to pinpoint where exactly to get started. For instance, the aircraft's transponders were turned off and its satellite communication systems were disabled, making it difficult for investigators to track the airplane's location. The lack of communication and radar data has made it challenging to accurately pinpoint the airplane's last known location and trajectory. When underwater search began, a network of independent investigators called the Independent Group closely followed the case. This group of pilots, scientists, and experts from around the world tried to analyze publicly available information and provide valuable criticism and questioning to the ATSB. With so much data to sift through and comprehend, Richard Godfrey, an aerospace engineer, exclaimed that getting your mind around the data's significance was just a lot. The reason behind the inability to locate. A final report on the missing Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 was released in 2018. Nearly four years later, it confirmed the theory that someone deliberately diverted the aircraft from its course before it mysteriously vanished. The report identified several mistakes that delayed the search and rescue operation and cited one crucial failure of the ULB, or the Underwater Locator Beacon System, which could have immediately located the missing MH370. The aircraft was fitted with ULBs, and all of them failed to admit any distress signal, and the report highlighted the problems in transmitting ULB signals when an aircraft enters the water. The airplane had a solid-state flight data recorder and a solid-state cockpit voice recorder, both equipped with an underwater locator beacon designed to transmit for at least 30 days at ocean depths of up to 20,000 feet. However, the maintenance records revealed that the battery for the FDRs and ULBs had expired in December 2012 and may have stopped functioning. Maintenance personnel also reported that the computer system responsible for tracking maintenance issues was not updated correctly when the FDR was replaced in 2008. That eventually led to the problem of being identified only after the disappearance of MH370. The report further stated that the design of the ULB includes an extra margin to account for battery life variability and ensures the device meets the minimum requirement. Once the expiration date has passed, the ULB's effectiveness decreases, and it may operate for a reduced time period until it finally discharges. 
The report also noted that while it's possible for a ULB to operate past its expiry date, there's no guarantee that it will work or meet the 30-day minimum requirement. Well, let's move on. When did MH370 turn south? There was a crucial disagreement between the ATSB and the independent group. Precisely when did the MH370 turn south? At 2.22 a.m. local time, the Malaysian military's primary radar indicated that the plane was heading northwest along the Malacca Strait. The Inmarsat satellite data confirmed this at 2.25 a.m. But soon after, the aircraft vanished from the radar. And by 3.41 a.m., the satellite data showed that it had inexplicably changed course and was now heading south. The final location of the missing aircraft depends on when it made this crucial turn and how far south it continued to fly before running out of jet fuel and crashing. In a puzzling turn of events, the Malaysia Airlines Operational Center attempted to call the airplane's satellite phone at 2.39 and again at 2.40, but there was no response. The ATSB believed that the airplane had turned south by the time of the first attempted call. However, the independent group and Godfrey believed the aircraft was descending by 2.39 a.m., indicating that it could have turned south as late as 3.36 a.m., almost an hour after the attempted phone call. It caused a lot of confusion in the case, as if the satellite data had been interpreted to show a descent. The aircraft would have crashed up to 870 kilometers further north than the northernmost point of the area searched by the ATSB. Despite the significant uncertainty surrounding the Inmarsat data, the ATSB used its assumptions to determine the search area, which Godfrey described as a little bit of a screw-up. The issue of determining the search area. The ATSB initially relied on the glide theory to determine the flight path of the missing aircraft. But later, Inmarsat satellite data showed that the aircraft entered a steep dive and crashed into the ocean. Although aircraft debris has been recovered, the initial massive underwater search spanned across an area of 120,000 square kilometers, nearly twice the size of Tasmania, and depths of up to six kilometers, which have yielded no conclusive results. The search zone covered a remote stretch of water almost 2,500 kilometers off the coast of Western Australia, where the aircraft was believed to have gone down. In 2015, the search area was extended to cover the highest probability area, but some experts suggested the analysis was flawed. The ATSB expressed confidence in their search until the end and only acknowledged doubts after a summit of experts in Canberra in 2016. Ultimately, the decision to extend the investigation was not made by the ATSB, but by the three governments involved. A lack of transparency on the part of the Malaysian government. Critics accused Malaysia's MH370 investigation of lacking transparency and urgency, with haphazard communication and withholding information, including a thousand-page report. Malaysia holds responsibility for investigating debris, causing diplomatic challenges for Australian authorities. But the Malaysian approach has been callous, with accusations of silence and stonewalling, particularly regarding a graphic depicting the airplane's radar track that was not shared with the ATSB or made publicly available. Moreover, there's been a controversy surrounding using the flight simulator of MH370's captain Zahari Ahmad Shah to plot a course to the southern Indian Ocean one month before the aircraft disappeared. Malaysian authorities deny knowledge of the simulated flight path on the captain's home flight simulator, with debate over its significance in narrowing the search area. The captain's potential involvement in a murder-suicide could impact compensation battles, as Malaysia Airlines has refused to provide documentation in some cases. What exactly has been found? As of December 2022, more than 20 pieces of debris believed to be from MH370 have been found on beaches in the Western Indian Ocean. The first debris positively identified as coming from MH370 was a right flapperon found on a beach in Reunion Island in July 2015. Serial numbers on the flapperon's internal components linked it to the missing aircraft, and a search for additional debris was conducted in the waters around Reunion. Several other pieces of debris believed to be from the airplane have washed up on shores in the Western Indian Ocean, including Madagascar, Tanzania, and the French island of Reunion. In addition, satellite data analysis has provided some information about the airplane's possible flight path and potential crash site. The search indicated that the aircraft likely flew south over the Indian Ocean and may have crashed in an area known as the Seventh Arc which is a region in the ocean where the airplane's final satellite communication was received. 
However, despite extensive search efforts in the area, no significant airplane trace has been recovered. The Malaysian government declared the disappearance of MH370 as an accident and presumed all passengers and crew to have lost their lives. So that's why, despite years of extensive search and rescue efforts, we still have many unanswered questions and a lack of concrete evidence. Are there any other reasons you suspect? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for joining us as we dived deeper into the mysterious disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370.